Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. A very warm welcome to all of you who are present here today physically in church and to those who are viewing the recorded service later. If you walk in, you, would have, you might still see the banner about the blood donation. So yesterday we had a successful blood donation drive. The National Bank, Blood Bank, managed to collect 24 number of blood bags. That's very good. Now, it has been reported that one blood donation can save as many as three lives. So we really do save lives, right? Uh, we must be aware that sustainable and good quality blood services play a critical role in the health of a society and in preparing for and responding to disasters. But praise God, we, the people of God, have the redeeming power of the blood of Christ. Right? In Romans 5, 8, God demonstrated his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Redemption is a free gift from God to man to justify him and to put him in right standing and relationship with God. And God is love. And the greatest expression of his love towards us is the blood of Jesus. That love covers every need man has had or ever will have. And every time we apply the blood, we experience the outpouring of his love. So let us all keep rejoicing in our hearts as we hope in hope for the Lord. Now over to Michael and his music team for our opening hymn. Shall we all rise and uh, prepare ourselves and to sing this hymn for the service of the Lord? Let's prepare ourselves physically and spiritually. Hallelujah. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the porter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, I feel thy will. While I am waiting, you do and still have thine own way. Thine own way, Lord. 
Beloved, having entered his gates with praise and thanksgiving, we have come together, both on site and online, as brothers and sisters in our Father's presence. We come to offer him our gratitude for his goodness and mercy, to hear, receive, and obey his holy word, to pray, to intercede, to seek his grace, and to ask his forgiveness of our sins, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. Let us spend a time of repentance. You may sit down. Repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Let us offer ourselves in quietness, in penitence and in faith, and renew our confidence and trust in his mercy. Together, the general confession. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against other people in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, before we share the peace, I just want to make an official welcome that we have uh, two guests with us, uh, Jenny Liu and uh, Vicky Chua, right? Ricky Chu. Uh, can you see? Yeah. Okay. Or uh, oh, three. All right. So on behalf of St. Gabriel's, welcome you. And after service, please do stay back for a time of fellowship. And now can we all rise and uh, we'll share the peace. Huh? Now may the peace of Christ be with you all. Let us go around to offer one another sign of peace. Yeah, we are ready to worship the Lord, yeah. <clears throat> uh, just before we uh, come to a time of worship, I just want to have a short uh, sharing uh, what happened to me uh, just uh, on the Deepavali evening. You know, God is good, you know, uh, I just had a minor accident and, uh, you know, it doesn't mean that I'm in, uh, expecting an accident, but what I'm trying to say is that God has been merciful and each time as we pray, we ask God for his guidance, for his protection. Indeed, God is always faithful and he always protects us. So I just want to thank him that uh, despite that I've you know, had a, a minor accident, but 
God was there to protect and there's not much severe injuries. So God has been good. So I believe God is good to all of us. And as we look to him in our daily prayer, in, in our walk with him, he's always be with us. So just be assured that God will never leave us and he will never forsake us as we look into him. Amen. So let's prepare ourselves as we uh, come to him. Before we hear the word of God, let us just give praise and worship him, okay? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Yes, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 see, I see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. And open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. And open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Yes, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we see holy, holy, holy. I am lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Holy, 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 holy. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love, we sing holy, 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 and high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. 
to be holy, set apart for you, my master, ready to do your will, ready to do Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders this world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're worth. Crucified, lay behind the stone. You live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall and taught of me above. Above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all ever known above all wealth and treasures of the earth there's no way to measure what you're worth crucify lay behind the stone you live to die Rejected and alone like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And taught of me Above all Crucified Lay behind stone
day and incense arise. Day and night, night and day and incense arise. Day children to come forward for blessing by pastor. Can the children come forward? Okay, yeah. okay can I see your name? Okay, okay. <laughs> all right, we shall now all pray for the children and then they will go for their classes. Okay, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for you have welcomed children, for truly to them belongs the kingdom of God. And Lord, today as we welcome these children and as they prepare themselves to go for their classes, we pray, Father, that your blessings will be upon them especially for the parents and also for the teachers. We pray that, Lord, you'll bless their time together so that all of them will, be grow, will grow up to be just like you. 
strong bodily, physically, emotionally, and psychologically. So pray for them, Lord, they be grow in stature and in wisdom, finding favour with God and with men. I bless you, Jermaine. You are Sean. And you are Seth. Vicky. Lucan. Elijah. Luen and Daniel. Okay, in Jesus' name, I pray. Reading the Collect of the Day. Almighty and eternal God, you have kindled the flame of love in the hearts of the saints. Grant to us the same faith and power of love that as we rejoice in their triumphs, we may be sustained by their example and fellowship. Through Jesus Christ, your Lord, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, let us, at this moment, to ask God for, to listen to our prayers. Let us all pray with an open heart. Heavenly Father, we want to only worship you. Take us deeper in our prayer life and in intimacy with you. Help us to walk in your light and holiness. Give us joy in your presence and help us to bring joy into the lives of others. Grant us faith to believe that you can change the nation, the community and families through our prayers and through acts of love and compassion. Lord, we bring before you our nation, Malaysia. The GE 15 polling date has been fixed on Saturday, November 19 this year. And Malaysia is expected to experience monsoons during the coming GE 15. This would cause setbacks for our economic recovery and times are going to be tough. And we have a great deal of concern about where our nation is heading into. From the media, there is so much confusion, so much distraction over what matters happening in our nation. But our desire, Lord, is to hear you speak to us personally and corporately. Lord, events may not happen the way we desire as our ways are not your ways, and our thoughts are not your thoughts. However, however, we pray for blessings upon GE15, that it would fulfill according to your agenda, and that your sovereign will to be done for the land of Malaysia. We pray for the entire process of the election, the nomination, the campaigning, the polling, the ballot counting and the declaration of winners will be announced appropriately. Lord, we pray that the church would stand united for Jesus Christ, our Lord. Even though we might form different judgments towards the GE15 candidates, we acknowledge that things in heaven and earth were created through him and for him. Lord, we pray that you will touch the hearts of the voters that they will not be plagued with a sense of disillusion and hopelessness, but they instead they will be fueled by a sense of hope, hope and purpose in their roles and involvement. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we remember the passing of our dear sister Veronica Ong. Lord, you are the way, the truth, and the life. We pray that the family members David Ong Nicholas, Kimberly, and Sister Francisca will continue to have hope no matter what is going on in their lives because you are present in their lives and you guide and you control over their lives. Lord, in their time of mourning, we ask, O oh Lord, you be their comforter. Grant them peace, grant them assurance over their futures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord, we also want to bring before you our Bishop Stephen Abaro on his medical treatment. Lord, we pray, O oh God, Lord, that he will get a good blood test result so that he can proceed with the stem cell harvesting. Lord, we also pray, O oh Lord, in your time that the stem cell transplant will take place. Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, that you will come with power and authority to bring life and healing to his body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also pray blessing to the life of our pastors, Reverend Joshua Ong, Reverend Wong, Pastor Peter Wong, and Deaconess Simping, and their families. Lord, free them afresh each day with the Holy Spirit, helping them to stay the course of being your faithful servants, to be obedient and resilient in their journey with you. Keep them in perfect peace. Grant them traveling mercies as they move about doing God's work. Lord, we praise you for your faithfulness to us. You are loving, you are kind, and you are always present, always available, and always protected, protecting. You never let your word come back void. Your word is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Lord, may the words preached today by James Chan penetrate to our soul and spirit and searches our thoughts and attitudes of our heart. Father, we ask of you an increased capacity of unshakable faith. Show us each day your hand in our lives, in the big and small things we go through. We praise you for the renewed faith and trust in you. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Let us say a prayer for St. Gabriel's Church. God, our gracious Heavenly Father, may you pour your Holy Spirit upon our hearts and bless the mission and ministry of St. Gabriel's. Assist us to faithfully and sincerely share the gospel and witness your saving love to all people around us. Give us grace to humble ourselves and serve others like Jesus who was the servant of all. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. We will now have the time of tithes and offering. And his time In his time He makes all things beautiful In his time Lord, please show me every day As your the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. We will now have the ministry of the word. The first reading will be read by Veronica Sue on Daniel. 
followed by Samuel Su on Ephesians. First reading. Daniel chapter 7, verses 1 through 3, and verses 15 through 18. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream, and visions passed through his mind as he was lying in bed. He wrote down the substance of his dream. Daniel said, In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me were the four winds of heaven churning up the great sea. Four great beasts, each different from the others, came up out of the sea. Verse 15, I, Daniel, was troubled in spirit, and the visions that passed through my mind disturbed me. I approached one of those standing there and asked him the meaning of all this. So he told me and gave me the interpretation of these things. The four great beasts are four kings that will rise from the earth. But the holy people of the Most High will receive the kingdom and will possess it forever. Yes, forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Second reading, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 23. Ever since I have heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparable great power for us who believe. That is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come, and God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel reading, which will be taken from the book of Mark, chapter 9, verses 30 to 37. Mark chapter 9, verses 30 to 37. They left their place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, The Son of God is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who has sent me. This is the gospel of Christ. We welcome James for the sharing of the word.
morning church. Okay, loud and clear. Okay. Uh, let's uh, pray. Let's pray before. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your words. As we think of all these things, open our heart and open our mind to hear you. Amen. You go to the next slides. You notice that there is three parts of this particular chapter 9, 30 to 37. The first one was the Jesus announced his death. Okay? And interesting enough is that he did it in this particular chapter the second time. Eventually, third time. If you knew the Jew, the Jew teach in repetitive. They remind and remind. Imagine the Lord himself repeat it the second time. And yet, the, sec the disciple, you can see here is that you must understand the environment is the inner circle. He specific get his disciple in and repeat that I all right, announce his death. And the disciple somehow the, the words he says here is that um, they did not understand and they are afraid to ask him. Okay? I want to say this is that in my profession, we ask questions. As a lecturer, as a teacher, as a boss, I expected the students, the staff to ask questions. All right? So asking questions is something that is very crucial. Imagine if the disciple asks questions, will things change? But somehow towards the end of the chapter, he did, they deny him. In all those who study management, if it reminds me of the late um, Peter Drucker. Peter Drucker is the father of the management thinking, the guru. Um, I want to share with this is that when he retired, all the performance CEO have to pay him 50000 just for an audience with him. And during that session, he only asked questions. And the CEO answered and got their answer. So that's a crucial part of here why sometimes the part of process is that the disciples don't understand, we do not know. To us, probably it's God's view, but to us it's a mystery in this particular area. Then go to the next session here is that instead of question, uh, asking about his death, what happened? It appears that in the deafness, deafness and the fear of the disciple, they go and speak about and talk about the pro his promise of kingdom. And therefore they say, who is the greatest? Who is the greatest? And you'll be surprised, the Lord always gives opposite teaching. All right, in the court, in, when it comes to the greatness is through servanthood. And today's topic is, sorry, this is just an introduction. Huh? <laughs> and today's topic is that I'm going to talk about, the next slide is servanthood. Okay. In Mark chapter 9, verse 35, it says that if anyone will be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. When we think about servanthood, we imagine ourselves that we are doing the low work. Not really. The, the, the issue here is the attitude. All right, it's the attitude. 
Do you think that you go to <coughs> some government officer there, you think they got a servant attitude? They said they ask you to wait, minum dulu. All right? You go to some waitress, of course, my wife always complains I'm impatient. The, you can see whether the servant serves you or not, you can see the attitude. Okay? So, the next few slides, I will give a lot of examples of Mother Teresa quotes. All right? Mother Teresa quotes. All right? Because Mother Teresa is one of the heroes of the Bible, all right? heroes of the things that I was looking forward to servanthood. Next slide. Can I consider and suggest you three qualities when it comes to servanthood? The first one is you need to put others ahead of your own agenda. It's not a position. It's serve out of love. The first one. Paul gives a good example and good illustration of his attitude by putting others ahead of his own agenda. Who is Paul? If you really look at it, that he's the best of the best, the Jew of the Jew. All right? His training as a Pharisee, he was trained under the best until he met the Lord. And what happened? And in 2 Corinthians 11, he says that, for Christ's sake, three, thrice, three times I was beaten with rod, once I was stoned, Three times I suffered under shipwreck, in weariness and, painf and painfulness, in watching others, in cold and nakedness, but for Christ's sake. And we should look forward to how Paul's attitude in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 33 says that, even if I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, so that they may be safe. You can see how he put the agenda on people's. Of course, in the second Corinthians here says that to the Jew, I became, I become the Jew, like a Jew. To those under the law, I become one under the law. To the weak, I became weak. So the mark of a servanthood is that the ability to put others ahead of yourselves and your personal desire. Okay? And I want to show you, this is something that always in my heart, uh, some of you know, I look forward to John C. Maxwell. Next slide. In John C. Maxwell, I always take this one. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That is a principle. You show a kindness to a person, you show certain works to that person, you put a coin into their pocket. The more kindness, the more uh, help you give to the individual, the individual coin continue to increase. But somehow, bad mood, you say something wrong, one coin is taken up. But you continue to have negative until the person pocket become bankrupt, then you lost, you lose the trust relationship. All right. So this is something that I always try to when it comes to management, when it comes to my manager, I always use this word. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So putting agenda on the first person, on, on, uh, your agenda is very crucial on the first point. Second point, it's not a position, okay? I like this. The son of thunder. Who is that? James and John. Okay? What is it you want? Jesus asked. She said, Grant one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right hand and the other at your left hand in your kingdom. Alright? Wow. The mother demanded. Alright? Very impulsive. That's why I call son of thunder. Alright? What happened to them? James was the first to die for Christ. 
All right. They were persecuted, James. Okay. So what happened? So it's John. John did not die. John was the last. And he wrote a book. And from the son of thunder, they earned a nickname called Apostle of Love. All right. So through the ministries, they begin instead of impulsive, you know. So in Matthew 20, verse 26, it said, Whoever wishes to be great among you shall be a servant. So a servant leader does, doesn't focus on rank or position, neither do they serve God for rewards. So again, John C. Maxwell, you got to love people more than your position. Are you me? And with the John C. Maxwell, I use this to train my people on servant leadership. All right. In the servant leadership, which is the next slide, I use this to guide myself how I manage people and how I manage. I always say that the first position is you don't really care about people. Why? People just have to obey you. Why? Because you have given a position, automatically you say, I am a manager. Straight away, I am a council member. All right. Straight away, I'm a PCC leader. But that is a title by default. But my suggestion is, of course, some children become a director of his family business. All right. It's a title. They just respect the title. They don't respect you. So therefore, you have to strive to elevate to the next level, which is permission. In the permission here is that People follow you because they want to. Why? Because you put a coin into their pocket. From there, you let them permission that to for you. So in a way, you begin to create that kind of trust relationship. Which means that going back to what I say, people don't care what you know. All right? Until you, you care. Then the third one is nice to have care happy, but when there is no productivity, no competency, that's why the leader need to have compassion comes with competency. All right? That's where the word called production. So when people follow you, why? Because in the organization, happy, yes, in family, but when there's no KPI, no productivity, no all these things, uh, how do the individual able to get salary, rewards, and all these things? Then they saw you taking the lead, to do the job, guide them, their career, and all these things. So this is called production, which is competency. So eventually, you go to people development, which means succession planning. You're able to develop them, and eventually go to the pinnacle respect. And respect is, obviously, the Lord himself is an area of the highest level of respect. Okay? The idea here is, is Servanthood is not a position. You can see throughout this leadership is you have to earn it. It's something that I want to share with you. So I have touched second point, all right, regarding on leadership, uh, regarding servant is not a position. The third one, it has to serve out of love. It has to serve out of love. You know, Peter denied Jesus, right? And in Luke chapter 22, verse 60, you can see the situation here is that in verse 61, it says that, And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the words that the Lord has spoken to him before the Sorry, are you mind? Huh? Now I can realize I cannot see much things. Really. Okay. Uh, the rooster crowed today uh, three times. You will deny. You will deny me three times. So Peter denied the Lord, and what happened? He went outside and wept bitterly. He cried. But later in the stage, what happened? The Lord 
reinstate Peter. Well, how do the Lord reinstate Peter? Ah, that was a strong one. When he was alone with Peter, he asked Peter, Do you love me? First time. Peter said that, Yes, Lord. You know I love you. Then the Lord said, Feed my lamb. Second time, again, the Lord asked, Do you love me? And third time, when the Lord asked, Do you love me? Peter was grief. And Peter said, You know everything. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. And this is a commandment that the Lord himself, this is my commandment, that you love one another, all of us. All right? So we serve out of love for the Lord himself loves us. So Mother Teresa says that in this life, we cannot do great things. We only do small things, but with great love. So these are the three points I, I want to highlight to you regarding on servanthood. What are you going to do about it? The next three. Can I suggest that you do the following to improve your servanthood attitude? First, move into action. Second, perform small acts. Third, learn to walk slowly. Okay? What do you mean move into action? Next slide. Sometimes, in an attitude of servanthood is absent in your life, the best way is to change it is to start serving. Begin with your body. Then your heart will eventually catch up. Are you with me? Sometimes we, our heart, but we have to start with our body first. Okay? Move into action. Okay? So, in Ezekiel says that I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a a heart of flesh. So, brothers and sisters, music ministry, start to sign up. Children, start to sign up. You may say, I don't have to act with the body first. Okay? So, there's something that I want you all to say here is that one of the quotes of Marie Teresa, I like this, is that there should be less talking a preaching point is not a meeting point. Then what do you do then? Take a broom, clean someone's house. That is enough. Action. Do your body. Okay? So this is something that I want you to move into action with your body. Second, perform small acts. Okay? Be faithful even in the smallest matter. Okay? Mother Teresa says that be faithful in small things because in them that your strength lies. I remember when I give a talk on wealth, money, wealth, and true wealth. In Luke chapter 16, verse 10 says that the Lord himself said, whoever can be trusted in small things can also be trusted with big things. Whoever is dishonest in the little things will be dishonest in big things too. If you cannot be trusted with a worldly riches, 
you will not be trusted with true riches. So it reminds me that to start the small things, I go back to my children. I'll go back to our house. You need to train our children to give them, to, or rather you need to give them some chores. All right. These are the small things they learn to be accountable, the small things in life. Okay? Teach them how to know the difference between when they eat the food is the need and the want. Example, when it comes to washing the plates, ask them to wash others. I didn't eat. It's Coco who eat. Ah, sounds very familiar. All right. But this is a small act that we can do big things in life. So when they have the responsibility in small things, it's a life skill, then a sense of responsibility will last a lifetime. So these are the small things that I would say that you need to perform. All right? Don't underestimate the small things in life. Mother Teresa says that you want to change the world, go home and love your family. Okay, start at home first. So that is something that the part of the uh, second point on performing small acts. Okay. The last one is very strange. Eh? Please to learn to walk slowly in the crowd. Okay. One lesson that we may learn is to walk slowly through the crowd. When you are bound to attend a function, make it your goal to connect with others by circulating among them and talking to the people. What it means, when you see a crowd, don't rush. Spend time listening. Three things when you walk slowly in the crowd. Three things. Spend time listening, number one. Number two, listen between the lines. Third thing, find a common ground with people. With that, Proverbs says, the words of a man's mouth are deep water. The fountain of wisdom is a bumbling root. Anxiety weighs down a human heart. A good word cheering up. So, be, walk slowly, listen. Okay? And Abraham Lincoln says, I walk slowly, but I never walk backward. I noticed that when Abraham Lincoln walks, he uses his hand behind and you know, go around, walk slowly. So that is the three things I am saying about the, what you should do. All right. First is move into action all right, with the body so that your heart can catch up. Perform small acts. A little, little things counts, especially for the ladies, okay? They know somehow, okay? And walk slowly. With that, with my last slide, in servanthood, he instructs us, the, in John chapter 13 says that the, he instructed his servant, if I then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Let us come to, to, to the church to serve and not to be served. There's no position in the church. We only do our best to serve Him in whatever capacity we are in. Again, Mother Teresa. I know God will not give me anything I can't handle. I just wish that He didn't trust me so much. Okay? So with that, um, before we close with prayer, I would like Michael to come up for us to sing 
the song called The Servant King. From heaven you came, helpless babe, and to our world your glory filled, not to be served but to serve, and give your life that we might live. This is our God, the Servant King. He calls us now to follow Him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the Servant King. My heavy love he chose to bear His heart with sorrow was torn Yet not my will but he you say This is our God, the servant Father, we thank you so much for revealing the hearts of God through the gift of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for us. How shall we respond to that? The only way to respond is with love, worship, humble gratitude, that we may have an obedient meditation, imitation of Christ. I pray that we will be true for us. Lord, 
I ask you by the Spirit, do a work in us that will take these words, the sermon, and make it more than just an information, but that your word, that you would burn deeply in our hearts, and so, so that we may, so they will be shaped and changed and transformed as your people. I pray that you do that for me. I also pray you do that for my brother and sisters in this morning service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, James, for the sermon. Let us stand to confirm and profess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God? The Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Together, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be, be seated. We will now have the notices. If you have the bulletin, you will see that in item 4, there's a Bible study. We will resume the book of Malachi, uh, led by Brother Larry Wong, uh, next Sunday after the service at 1.15 p.m. Do join. It's a wonderful session. And then there will be water baptism uh, class on 6 November. Uh, please sign up for those who are interested with the church office. And we would like to say congratulations to the proud parents, Priscilla Wong and Jared, for the birth of another son named Asher Joshua Reginald. And also our congratulations to the grandparents, Pastor Peter and Susan Wong. Yeah, we hope to see them soon. Okay, and uh, we have two birthdays this coming week. Ryan, John Shiu and Ryan Lowe. Let us commit them to God. Dear Lord, we thank you that you bring before us John and Ryan Lo, who are celebrating their birthdays this week. Lord Almighty, bless them with a life full of joy and happiness. And may you always find favor, and may they always find favor in your eyes. Have a happy birthday to both of them. We will now have the... Pastors for the benediction. Shall we rise to say together the disciples' prayer and then we will sing the doxology as a closing uh, blessing. Let's pray together. Almighty God, you have called us to live and share Jesus-shaped life in the Jesus-shaped church for Jesus-shaped world. Empower us with the Holy Spirit to live as disciples who make disciples of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Praise God from whom
go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. We'll have the Thanksgiving song, Michael. As we close, uh, let us always bear in mind of the message that we had this morning by Brother James. <clears throat> we have to have a heart and attitude of a servanthood to be humble before people and most of all, humble before the Lord. <clears throat> Purify my heart Let me be as gold and precious silver purify my heart let me be as good bless you and have a great week let's have a time of fellowship at the coffee corner god bless